Hi guys, welcome back to another Unity Touch tutorial. My name is Devin, and today we're going to be creating a joystick that will control player rotation, and this will complete our first-person controller for mobile devices. Um, now before I start real quick, uh, there's one last thing that I forgot in, uh, in the last episode concerning player movement, and that is uh, that if we were to... Uh, if we were to look up in the sky and then use our joystick to move forward, we would actually be um, flying. And uh, yeah, so if I look at the camera, we are actually in the air. So just a quick way to prevent that, we're going to make a uh, late update function. And this will happen after the update we're just going to move our controller back down. So after every update, we're going to check if the controller, the character controller, is not grounded. The exclamation mark means not. Uh, then we are going to move the controller downward. Um, vector 3 dot down times, I don't know, two. So now, if we do the same thing, we should, let me uh, move this guy around real quick so we can look at the camera. So now if we look up, oops, if we look up and move forward, we will just move forward and not into the sky. Alright, awesome. So now that that part's done, let's move on to the player rotation with a joystick. So, first off, let's just go ahead and remove our swipe pad from the scene. Um, let's create a new joystick, and we will call this Joy Rotate. Rotate. Um, and we're going to want to uh, add an enumerator to, to be able to pick what type of uh, joystick we want, or what type of functionality we, we want our joystick to have. So in order to do this, we're going to need to use an enumerator, which is pretty much a boolean, except you could have multiple states. Uh, and, and this will look like a drop-down menu in the, uh, in the inspector. So I'm going to call this joystick type, and it can be um, define some types here. We're going to use movement for like being able to move the player control or the player to go forward and backwards, left, right. Uh, and then we're also going to want one for look rotation, which is what we're going to be developing right now. And just for the hell of it, let's throw in something else like sky color just to show that you can use these uh, values that we're extracting from the joy delta to control anything in script that you could control with numbers, which is pretty much everything. Um, so now that we've defined that, we also need to define an instance of the numerator, so we're going to say joystick type. We're going to call this uh, the same thing, just joystick type, but lowercase, because it has to be different. Yeah, and if you look in Unity, we should have, there we go, we should have the drop down of movement, rotation, sky color. Uh, so this is the rotate one, we want that to rotate, and I'm going to move it over there, and let's go ahead and make our sky color one as well. Move that uh, I don't know, up there in the sky because it controls the sky. All right, sky color. And this will be sky. All right. Um, right. So now we're going to need to modify our apply delta joy function to uh, be able to find out which uh, state of the enumerator that we are on. And 
have different functionality for that. So I'm going to make a switch statement, and it's going to look at joystick type, see what it is, Uh, all right, case, all right, joystick type dot movement. So a switch is just an if statement, except structured differently. Um, so it's going to look at joystick type, and if it is equal to um, joystick type dot movement, then it's going to move going to use our move functionality. And we're going to want to break that, make a new case, joystick type dot look rotation, and I'm just going to fill in all these real quick, joystick type dot sky color. And we could have a default case, but I'm not going to do that. Alright, so, um, for the look rotation, we can actually copy and paste the stuff that we've done for the swipe, the touchpad um, script earlier, um, and I'll, I'll still go over it, uh, but for time's sake, I'm just going to go ahead and copy it. Alright, so we're going to need pitch and yaw and that stuff. And just paste right in there, and tab it over. Um, and let's see, we're going to need rotate speed and pitch and yaw. So let's add these up here. Pitch and yaw and rotate speed we can add up with our public floats, so we'll say rotate speed. Uh, yep, that's spelled the same. Equals 100.0f. Um, and I didn't copy those over, so I'm just going to delete those. Uh, so, oh, um, yeah, so we don't want to use zeros anymore because that's only going to look for the very first touch that was ever on the screen. Uh, instead, we're going to use um, the touch to watch. Um, yeah, that's it. All right, so for those of you who were not uh, present for the swipe rotation tutorial, uh, just a quick overview. We Oops. Uh, I also need to pitch in the uh, I already meant it. Okay. So just a quick overview for those of you who did not watch the uh, swipe rotation uh, tutorial. Uh, what's happening is it's going to find the delta position of our touch in the X and Y and use those values to rotate our camera in the pitch and yaw. Uh, we're clamping it at 80 and negative 80 uh, degrees, so you can't continuously go backwards or forwards if you're rotating in the, the Y. Um, and then we apply those values there. So that should just work if uh, you try that. So this one over here is rotate. Yep, there we go. So there you go. You have a joystick that controls rotation and another joystick that controls movement. Awesome. All right, so now just to show you that we can, I'm going to use this third joystick to control the sky color. Um, and of course, this doesn't have to be sky color, it doesn't have to be rotation, it doesn't have to be player movement, it could be anything that you can control with a float value. Um, so yeah, just to change the color, we're going to find the camera.main camera.color 
background color. And we're going to set it equal to a new color. Um, and then we put in values for R, G, and B, and A if we want to, but I'm just going to do R, G, and B, and we're just going to use the joy delta dot x, joy delta dot y, and I don't know, uh, for B, we'll, we could just use joy delta dot x plus or times joy delta dot y. Or actually, we're not using y. I forgot. We're using z. Right. Okay. So now if I move that top middle one, it will control the color of this guy. There we go. Blue, red, black, green, whatever. So yeah, you can use these joysticks to control any value that you want. That's awesome, right? One problem that you might notice though is, uh, here let me pull it up real quick. If I am touching on one of these joysticks, and then I grab the other joystick and start moving that one as well, if I move my finger off of the first one, then the second one gets confused and no longer responds to my finger movement. Um, and that's happening because when we lift our first, or, okay, so when we put our first finger down, the first finger is touch index zero, the second finger is touch index one. But if I remove the first finger, if I remove touch index zero, then touch index one gets pushed down the list and now this one is considered touch index zero. Um, so to combat this, to, to adjust our touch indexes so the joysticks always pay attention to the right finger, uh, we need to make a new script. And I'm going to call this one um, touch manager. And we could just throw this on any old object. I'll put it on my level game object. And open it up. Alright, so don't need that, I don't think. I'm going to inherit from touch logic. And I'm going to uh I'm gonna to want to be able to reference every game object, every script that inherits from touch logic, and find the touch to watch and modify it whenever a touch is lifted from the screen. So I'm gonna need a public array of um, of touch logic scripts. So I'm going to say public touch logic and then put the square brackets brackies um, and call these uh, touch uh, touches to manage. There we go. Um, so in the inspector we should have this array, and we're just going to want to plug in everything that has a touch to watch variable on it that it needs to pay attention to. So there's going to be three of those, um, and we'll just plug these in. Oops, damn it. Let's plug those in. And since they all inherit from touch logic, we can use this array. Uh, so, what we want to do is every time a touch ended, so on touch ended anywhere on the screen, anywhere, bink. Uh, so every time a touch ends on the screen, we're going to want to find out what the index of that touch was, and then if the touch that we are looking at for each of these, uh, each of these scripts is greater than that index, then we're going to want to adjust it. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, right, so we're going to say for each mm -hmm. 
for each touch logic object in touches to manage or touches to manage without the R. Um, find out if that object, which um, touch to watch. All right, so. Uh, for each, we'll cycle through every single one of the items in the uh, in the array and perform this action on it, uh, calling it object. So this will be object the first time around. This will be object the second time around, and this will be object the third time around in the loop. So every time, we're going to want to check to see if that object's touch to watch variable is greater than the current touch, touch logic, current touch, uh, current touch being the touch that just left the screen. So, if our touch to watch is greater than the touch that just left the screen, then adjust that value by negative one. We don't even need these because there's only one thing in that code block. Right. So, one more thing. We're going to want to, um, here, on touch ended, anywhere in our joystick script, we're going to also want to check uh, if the uh, touches on the screen dot length is less than or equal to zero. So if there are no touches on the screen, then we're going to do this. Uh, and that's just a fail safe to uh, make sure that the joystick never gets stuck when there are no fingers on the screen. Uh, right. So finger on the move joystick and then finger on the rotate joystick. If I remove the rotate joystick and move this one, it still pays attention to the right finger. So there we go. We are all done. I know we had to do a few uh, fancy things with this touch manager and whatnot, but uh, now you have it.